We're going to talk about some things for you to consider in terms of technology, and we're going to take a closer look at the day in the life of uh, a young person participating in this program. And then we've left a significant amount of time at the back end of this for Q&A, because we assume that by the end of this, folks will have a ton of questions. And as we've said throughout the whole process, that we really want to make sure that we can provide you with as much information as possible um, today that we can. And then on Thursday, uh, as you continue to do your trainings with hats and ladders, just to really think about how project-based learning and the hats and ladders platform can really coexist and, and make for a very great experience for our young people. So just want to review the norms. Uh, please mute your mic during the session. Uh, as stated before, these sessions are being recorded. So um, please try and keep your camera off if you don't want to be revealed. Um, if you have any questions or comments during the meeting, please use the chat function. Uh, we have a lot of people in the session, so unmuting yourself really isn't that helpful. And if you have trouble hearing or any issues with the presentation, please let one of us know via the chat and we'll definitely let you uh, try and help you out. Also, if you have any colleagues that are having any difficulty joining the meeting, please let us know and we will try and figure out how to troubleshoot that as quickly as possible. Am I missing anything else before we move forward? Um, and per per periodically, for those of you who might be joining us now that weren't on this morning, um, we'll definitely be taking pauses and giving opportunities for um, for uh, questions as needed. Cool. All right. Okay. So with that, we're going to jump in. We started to provide just a broad overview of the full summer bridge. Uh, scope and sequence in session one, and just going through the different model components. Um, in this second session, we're going to share what is a universal scope and sequence that was put together by all of the TA partners who've been working closely with DYCD. And then we'll spend quite a bit of time on the Summer Bridge PBL website to give you a sense of just how to navigate the site, um, what are some of the core features, and then talk about, you know, what are some of the technology considerations that you'll need to have when you start to implement this summer. So both the self-guided learning, what are some ways that you can facilitate that more seamlessly, and then also the synchronous learning or these video conferencing um, and facilitated sessions. So with that, if you can stop sharing the PowerPoint too, I'll open up my screen. Great. Okay. So in the first session, can everybody see this? Can get thumbs up? Cool. All right. So in the first session, we went over really just a roadmap of what DYCD is asking in terms of hours. Um, and again, for folks who are not in session one, we'll make sure that you get the recordings of these sessions as well as the decks and that's embedded. Um, what I want to show and walk through right now is just a universal scope and sequence that has a breakdown of all of the different content and options that you have available to you outside of what have you might have already developed um, internally and with your program. So this is really a document that shows all of the TA providers that again have been contracted by DYCD. Um, there are a lot of different initiatives and programs out in the ecosystem right now, which is fantastic. I know a lot of folks have also received funding from YES, um, which is wonderful. Anything that you're doing within the, next, the YES initiative can also be incorporated into your hours and your summer program. Uh, this just talks about on page one, the different components from Hats and Ladders, the Youth Development Institute, and then Grant Associates, who's doing the workplace challenge for the older youth participants. And I won't spend a lot of time here. You'll get a copy of this, um, and you can spend some time going through just the overview and then also checking out websites if you wish to do so. Um, one additional component that has been added uh, by the Center of Youth Employment in New York City is also Career Village. Um, and they're a platform that young people can use to actually chat with industry experts uh, live. So if I have a question about, you know, I wanna be a nurse practitioner and I really wanna understand what are the different pathways and things that I need in order to move into that space, I could go on to Career Village and actually ask someone and it's crowdsourced and folks can actually respond to me. Um, there are also different functions within that site where young people can create to-do lists, 
Um, and it's just another element that can be added to this. Uh, Career Village also has three hours of content that if you're looking to, again, like plug and play and get additional hours for your young people, you can certainly use that as well. Not mandated. The only things that are mandated really in the summer bridge DYCD model are, again, those hats and ladders hours um, and the workplace challenge for older youth. I'm going to keep scrolling. We talked through this in the first session, really this week being a week to, to prepare very, very quickly. I know folks are in a lot of trainings this week. Um, as you start to implement programming, weeks one and three are all about getting your groups engaged, uh, making sure they understand what are expectations, what's the schedule, uh, what's the lay of the land, how do I submit any work that I've been doing, um, you know, all of those very key items so that I can fully participate in the program. And then weeks three and five is really when you're going to get into the heart of your project-based learning experience and your workplace challenge. So this is where you're supporting young people in finalizing whatever their strategy is for their community action project um, and making sure that they also have some sort of venue at the end of this program in week five to showcase their work to date. Um, let's see. So week one, and again, this is just a deeper, more detailed uh, scope and sequence, but it does match what DYCD has provided in terms of an hourly breakdown. This just goes through exactly what Hats and Ladders is providing, what YDI has available, and then also what is in the workplace challenge. So you'll see week one is really the start of programming where we're front loading more of the Hats and Ladders work and starting project-based learning. And the intention of front loading hats and ladders, and I shared this in session one, but I do see some new folks in this space, um, is to allow for participants to get acclimated and also for providers, for you all to have some time if you're still in the process of staffing up, um, you're still trying to figure out, you know, what is our synchronous sessions going to look like. Everything they do on the hats and ladders app is self guided. So it would not require a ton of um, of a facilitation in those first few weeks. And again, that is why I'm going to thank you. Um, so you'll see hats and ladders this first week. We're logging in and getting started. You have the level zero profile building. So that's really that I'm going to go in. I'm going to be asked uh, to swipe right or left from a series of prompts that will then generate my workplace profile. Um, and I'm not going to spend a ton of time going into details around that. You have hats and ladders trainings that are coming up. And then we'll also, again, have this joint session on Thursday where we'll talk about how you can use both the learning that's happening in the app and then the YDI PDL curriculum to create a very holistic model. So here, again, I'm doing pathways. And then for project-based learning in this first week, the hours are not many, right? It's for only five hours for younger youth. What you're going to see here is just a, um, a breadth of hours. So if I decide that I'm only going to do a single session from YY, for example, session one, that would only be three hours of self-guided content. If I decide I'm going to use both of PBL or YDI's PBL sessions, then it would be six hours of content. And so for these first sessions, it's all about getting oriented. You get introduced as a young person to project-based learning, and you start to explore the role of hope in building future opportunities. So as a facilitator, I can decide I want to use both of these sessions. I'm going to do the full six hours, or I can decide I'm going to use one or none. I have my own content that I'm going to plug in here to make up those hours. In terms of facilitated time, in our guide, you'll see that there's facilitated sessions that really complement and overlap what young people are doing. If I decide to use all of that time, it's up to two hours. If I only use a single part of that facilitation, it's one hour. So again, there's a lot of wiggle room and flexibility here. It's just to show you the full breadth of the content that is available for you to use for the summer. Um, for OY, very same thing, sessions one and two, I have three to six hours or one to two hours. For OY, the workplace challenge does not start necessarily in week one in the scope and sequence that DYCD has given us. 
Um, if you decide that you want to start that workplace challenge earlier, you certainly can. Um, what I would advise is just as these questions come up or you're kind of finalizing your summer schedule, just check in with your program manager um, or a deputy director at DYCD just to make sure that everything is fine in terms of how you're moving forward. And then here you'll also see that we've created some universal milestones that connect all of these different components. So this first week is really about building self-awareness across all of these elements. Um, right here, we don't have any suggested incentives for the first week because we're just getting the lay of the land. Um, and you'll see some folks are also in the chat right now. The total hours for YY for week one are 12 hours and for OY are 18 hours. So I'm gonna pause before I go to week two because I do recognize this is a lot to look at and, and absorb and it's also very abstract looking at someone else's screen. So let me pause and see if there are questions surfacing from the group. It's also very abstract looking at someone else's screen. Oh, sorry. Did someone have a question? I don't, I don't see any right now, but if anybody okay. has any questions, uh, time will be to uh, drop them in the chat. Please know, we know that a number of you are having struggles with your staff members getting into the session. Um, we are not going to share passwords. We've used the, a registration process just to protect us all because unfortunately, once a password is out in the world, it does allow a person to get in um, and we lose a measure of security that we have. So, so apologies, but that's the reason why we're not sharing directly the password to this site. To this, to this session. Okay, so I'm gonna go through week two. Um, actually, you know what, I'm gonna skip to week three because you will get a copy of this. And I think once you have it uh, available, you can really deeply explore it. But this is just to give you an overview um, of everything that's been generated. So in week three, this is really when things start to transition for both YY and OY. And there's just a uh, increase in hours. Um, really more for OY, I should, I should be specific about that. So with Hats and Ladders, I continue to go through the Hats and Ladders app. At week three, I'm starting level three. Um, I'm also starting to look at pathway ladders. So these are, are more concentrated and really meet sort of your personal profile. So you have a lot more uh, control over where you go and the ladder courses that you get to explore. And then in PBL, if I'm going through the YDI PBL curriculum, I'm going to go through sessions five, six, and seven, and you'll see there's a note here. So the note says that YY time and facilitated learning can be adapted to meet weekly PBL hours. We've given you a lot of content. You don't necessarily, as I've said before, need to use all of it, but you have a range of three to nine hours of self-guided learning and then one to three hours of facilitated time. So really, anytime there's a session and we have a facilitated component that's attached, it's usually an hour to 90 minutes of activity. So you could use all of these things, a few of them or none, depending on you know, where you are and the planning that you've been able to do thus far. But you'll see at the end of the week, you still need to meet, or your young people see, need to meet these 12 hours. For older youth, the week three is when that workplace challenge is introduced. And for the first week, they have two hours of self-guided learning. So the OI here, two hours of self-guided, and then three hours of facilitated content that's available. Now the workplace challenge, again, that content was developed by Grant Associates. It does live on the YDI website just to keep everything in one single hub but you will have a training from Grant Associates by, I think it's, and correct me if I'm wrong, Theo and Dennis, I believe it's on Friday, um, and they will go over all of the components of the workplace challenge. For the wow. rest of the, the following weeks, it really follows a very similar structure. Um, you can divide your time between PBL and workplace challenge as long as you're getting those 18 hours for older youth. And then the final week, Again, 12 hours and 18 hours, and you'll have lots of content here that you can continue to play with. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing and just open up again. Hold on, Tyler, before you before you okay. stop sharing, there was a request to go back to week one. I don't know if there was sure. a, 
there was a yeah, so when I, and also when I'm sharing, I'm sorry, I can't see the chat. So Dennis and Theo, if you can continue to like lift any of those yeah. questions. So there was a, a request to go back to week one. Vernon, did you have a question? No, not a question. I just wanted to go back to um, week two. Oh, week two, sure. And then um, you skipped over, I think, week four. Yeah, so I and I purposely skipped over those because really the hourly breakdown for the first few weeks are the same, and then the last three weeks they they follow the same number of core hours. And again, you got you'll all get this, so you'll have a chance to go through it. And all of the TA providers who are attached to DYCD and partnering this summer, so Hats and Ladders and Grant Associates, will also show this universal uh, scope and sequence. And we intentionally put this together just to try and make things less confusing. Because at one point, YDI's got a couple scope and sequences, Hats and Ladders has a scope and sequence, Grant Associates has one, and so it's a lot of material to try and sift through in a very short time. So this was just an effort to combine everything. So at a broad kind of high level, you can see what's available to you for implementation. Um, so there, there are a few questions that are around that are basically the same thing. Does everyone have to participate in workplace challenge or are they able to have a PBL product instead? And it's so kind that's of a great, yeah, great question. So for OY, um, DYCD is pushing for the workplace challenge, but the workplace challenge and the project-based learning can be one in the same, right? Via the workplace challenge, older youth are going to learn the policies and practices and different elements of design thinking. And design thinking in terms of the process really overlays with PBL. So there's going to be that initial phase of understanding the problem, there's going to be an ideation phase around how do we solve for this collectively in our community? How do we start to test our solutions? And then how do we showcase a project? So you can decide as, as a provider, as a facilitator, that our workplace challenge is our project-based learning, and we may even start that earlier. And that is absolutely a decision that you can make. There's flexibility around this. Um, the, I think, and Cynthia said this in the first session, that you do need to move through the hats and ladders as the hours are asked. So that means for OY, for the first three weeks of programming, I'm doing 10 hours of hats and ladders on the app. For YY, I'm doing five hours. And then with the project-based learning and workplace challenge for OY, there's just more flexibility about how you spread that out. And Cynthia, would you like to, to share? Yeah, I'll, I'll also add that um, for the workplace challenge and, you know, you all will hear more about it when you go to the uh, training, they have a session on Thursday and a session on Friday, um, that the intent, as Tyler was explaining at the top of the second session, is that young people are going to now have an opportunity to put in practice what they have been learning so it's key that they have that experience with um, the workplace challenge and, you know, connecting with an industry partner to, um, to have that experience. Um, so there's flexibility then on how you implement the PBL model, uh, whether it is self-developed or the uh, joining and, and using the curriculum and resources that YDI has developed so that you can implement that experience. So the flexibility is in terms of the content that you're delivering. Um, however, we want to ensure that young people do have that experience of a workplace challenge, especially because um, it's very different to uh, have now this summer bridge model where um, young people are going to experience work readiness, not necessarily a work-based experience. So we are trying to um, ensure that through the workplace challenge and having organizations partner with industry partners, we bridge, right? This is the summer bridge program. Um, we bridge those opportunities for young people. Absolutely. Um, and, and to build, thank you so much, Cynthia. And to build from that as well, you know, as the, we move through the summer, additional opportunities are gonna come up. I know that Center for Youth Employment is also putting together a list of various career panels um, that we'll, we'll all have access to as well. So as you start to move through this and, and really build out your program model, 
you'll have those PBL elements that really build the foundational skills for young people. They apply it in the workplace challenge and via those facilitated sessions get an opportunity to actually interact with professionals. Um, so there's a lot of application that happens in these last three weeks. So, so there are a lot of questions that are coming up uh, um, as, as we figured. Uh, um, I don't want some of them to get lost and they're kind of uh, part of this. So one of the questions was, can we still use hats and ladders in weeks four and five for self-guided work hours? So you can use hats and ladders at the app, but those hours would not count toward uh, the, the hours that youth are paid for. That's correct, right, Cynthia? Yes, so you can continue to use it in terms of young people can explore. There's a ton of content on the app. Um, they can explore different pathways, but it cannot be counted toward their overall either 12 or 18 hours. Uh, does the entire, uh, I guess the entire group have to work on one project or can you work on smaller projects within uh, the cohort? Yeah, I mean, I think it really depends on your capacity. If you're able to have smaller groups, I think that's a great way to go. Um, it's really nice to be able to work with a group of like 10 young people to move a project along. So um, you do have to maintain that one to 40 ratio um, as per DYCD, the DYC contract. But if you want to have smaller groups and smaller projects, that is certainly an option. Yeah, I can I add, you know, I'm, I'm imagining this might be someone that has, you know, over 100 young people that are going to be experiencing um, their program this summer. So, you know, if you want to organize everyone around two to three topics or themes and then have those pods be focused on those projects, absolutely, you have the flexibility to do so. And I, I see some questions here that are specifically around uh, the work uh, workplace challenge. Um, and I know that you guys are going to be getting a training on those. So um, as we've re repeated to say, repeated a few times, we're going to definitely take note of the questions that are in this chat um, and put together um, a one pager with some of these answers for you guys. So um, we'll come, if you don't mind, we'll move on from this workplace challenge stuff and kind of keep talking about PBL just in the interest of time. And, yeah, and I, I was going to say, you know, um, like Tyler mentioned, Hats and Ladders, YBI, and um, DB Grant have been working closely to ensure that this is a seamless experience and an online experience. So we will be sure to share those questions with DB Grant as well. Um, but I am confident that the questions that might be coming up, you know, are going to be answered on Thursday and Friday. As I was going to say, say the exact same thing. So we have uh, really been trying to work as closely as we can uh, to make sure that we're sharing the same messaging, we're all on the same page, and that anything that's surfacing about any component of the model, that we're all able uh, to, to wrap around that and provide as much information. Um, so we'll continue to do that. And, and you know, as, as Theo and Bo Cynthia said, you'll get a ton more information from Chris and the team and Grant Associates uh, come Thursday and Friday. Um, one other question I did see, so one second, I just lost my chat. Okay, I think we, I think for the most part we answered PBL questions, but again, we'll, we'll continue to look at the chat and make sure that we, if we don't address it right now, we'll get back to you as soon as we Right. Can. I think it was, a, I, I know what it was, Tyler. It was the question about the facilitated hours. Yes, the, that's the, what it was. Uh, so, um, in terms of self-guided versus facilitated, that is also very much up to you. So what we've shown in the scope and sequence is that we have X number of, of self-guided hours that young people can move through. But if you decide, you know, my group, does much better in a synchronous session and I feel more comfortable having a, you know, multiple synchronous sessions during a day or having one every day and that's how we're gonna finish the bulk of our hours, you can absolutely do that. Um, it's up to you and what works best with your group of young people. Great, so with that, um, I think we should start going into the website. I know that's been uh, something that folks have really wanted to check out. Um, you can skip that slide, Theo. Yeah, so I'm going to share my screen again. One second. All right. 
So we're coming back. Does everybody see uh, SYP Summer Bridge Summer 2020? Awesome. So again, for folks who are just joining us, this is the website that really serves as a hub for all of YDI's PBL content. Um, this is both facilitator facing and youth facing. Um, and I'll go over the, the different features in just a moment. Um, another note is that the content from DB Grant also lives on here, again, just to have one place to access everything. So here on my homepage, there's a short welcome with the video. Um, there's a note here about which cohort or program you're a part of. So if I'm 14 or 15 versus if I'm 16 to 24. And then I navigate to my track either using the hyperlinked pages here, or I could go to the very top and click on younger youth or older youth and all of my sessions are here. Uh, one thing I do want to say is we provided a lot of content in here and a step by step guide for young people of how to navigate the site. But on the first day of program, if you do decide to use this site, I think it's a really good practice to walk through it with your young people to make sure they understand where they need to go, that they're an OY versus a YY. Um, there's a lot of language that continues to get thrown around. We just want to make sure that young people fully understand which track they should, should jump on board. Um, so again, younger youth, older youth, and then we have the YY and OY portfolio workbooks here. This is the workplace challenge content, facilitator resources. So this is where YDI webinars and the facilitator guide will live. And then a digital resource library that has content for civic engagement, climate justice, the census and voter registration. So what I'm gonna do is just start and walk us through a couple YY and OY sessions. We'll also have a chance to look at the workbooks and how I start to kind of toggle between my website and my workbook, um, how I might use the digital resource library if I'm a young person or a facilitator, um, and then also quickly check out the workplace challenge page. So to get us started, I'm gonna start with the YY content. And so I click here, um, and this very first page that I come to is all about setting the stage. So this is really, what is this program? Why am I doing it? Why project-based learning? And how do I use the website? Um, so first things first, we talk about hats and ladders. You'll see that throughout the website, we constantly reference hats and ladders. So that again, there's integration of that system as well as what we're doing here. So as you get oriented, just a reminder to check in with your host site for your schedule and to start building your profile on the Hats and Ladders app. That's the entry point for all young people once they get started. And then here we have what's included in this experience. We talk about the host site, the design team that folks will be working with, the workplace challenge for OY, the SYEP PBL website, which is where they are in this system, um, Hats and Ladders, and then we go into how to use the site. Now here, it's a lot of text, right? So we did create a video that captures all of this as well. So if there's someone who's like, I'm not gonna read through all the text, they wanna just watch the video, they can do that. And we've tried to do that uh, quite a bit because we know that you know something that's text heavy, not everyone's gonna read through all of it and folks are comfortable learning in very different ways. This talks about how to use the site. So it just, uh, goes through the 15 guided sessions, the portfolio steps and portfolio workbook. And then this PDF, which is embedded, but can also be opened and downloaded, has a step-by-step -step guide of how do I walk through every single session. So session one, everything I click on, all the arrows embedded, how I use the workbook, that's all here. And then one thing that is being added to this page is a demo video. So they'll have lots of different modalities for understanding how, how to do this because it will be self-guided work. And we know that you know, when that happens, it can get really confusing. So trying to create as many possibilities for troubleshooting as we can. Um, so when I'm ready, I've gone through my whole page. I click on YY session one to get started. So here I land on my very first session and I'm going to talk through just the formatting of these sessions. So each one starts with an icebreaker. Um, icebreakers are optional. 
For this first icebreaker, it's in the participant portfolio workbook. And that's really intentional. It's to start getting them used to having to move from the website to the workbook, um, because that is going to be a practice that they start to, that they need to integrate. Every day is set up the same way where I have today's mission, which just talks about exactly what I'm doing for the day, a quick overview, and then my goals for today. So I'm going to understand the goals of my summer learning experience. I'll identify where I am today in my self discovery journey. And I'll start to create a vision of where I want to see myself in the future. And to continue doing this, I move below to the portfolio steps. And here there's a reminder that every portfolio workbook step should take an hour, right? So that that's how young people will know I have three steps. This is three hours of content. Again, it's an estimated approximate number of hours for some young people. They'll use the full three hours and for others, it might take them a little less time. That is okay. We are still giving them three hours if they've moved through these sessions and they've completed the portfolio steps. So for my first portfolio step, I'm prompted to watch a PBL video. Anytime there's any kind of link to something, it's hyperlinked here. Um, and one thing that we've noted on the very first page, which I did not highlight, is that at no point should young people pay for access to any platform. So what we've curated and embedded are all free sites. Um, but as we know, all free sites are also trying to generate money. So sometimes I think this comes up for Canva as an example. It'll bring young people to a page that says Canva Pro. They should just skip that. At no point should they pay for access to anything. And so that's going to be something just as facilitators move through this, they should continue to remind young people because that is something we, we know will come up. Um, so I watch my PBL video and after viewing, I answer the following questions in my workbook. So I'm going to go to my workbook. Um, right now, I would either go here and click on YY or I click on OY. I've already opened up a workbook copy. So I'm going to go here and in my workbook, this first page is my icebreaker where I start to fill out my profile, my goals for the summer, uh, would you rather question and this is just a way to get young people grounded in the space, practice using the workbook. And it's also something as you're doing facilitated sessions, you can ask about and build in. So how many people finish session one's uh, icebreaker? Let's talk about it. Can you share some of your answers? So it also is a way to bring in more facilitated content. If I go back to my website, I'm on session one. So I move through my portfolio steps here. I either create a two minute video using my phone or I complete a three, two, one reflection in my workbook. And I want to highlight here that for every portfolio step, we've provided some options. There's always going to be a low tech option as in, I'm just going to do it in my workbook. Maybe I only have a PDF copy of my workbook and I'm going to fill it in and I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to send that to my host site or my facilitator. Or if I have tech to access and I'm able to upload a video, I can choose this option. And you'll see at every point through portfolio steps, we've done that just to make sure that any sort of tech access does not prohibit a young person from actually completing that portfolio step. So the same thing happens with portfolio step two. I start to think about, um, what are some of the things that matter to me? What are some things that are coming up for me in this moment, in this summer? And I start to create a vision for the future. I can free draw. I can make a front page news story. I could create a comic book or using an online collage. I'll just click on this. I could use a collage at bfunky.com. So a lot of different options. If I decide I'm not going to do the bfunky, I'm just going to go to my workbook and see what's in there. I would go back here and I'd scroll through portfolio step one. So I could either do my three, two, one reflection. I could start to fill in my vision board here. I could do my newspaper here. I could do my comic book. It really depends on what a young person wants to do, but there's a lot of choice embedded. I go through the same process in portfolio step three. And then when I'm done, I'm able to go to session two. 
But I'm going to pause here for just one second. I do want to show folks again, I know we have a lot of new people in this space, that the, the way that this was designed is really to be mobile friendly. So once it's on a mobile device, all of these portfolio steps simply become stacked. So then I have portfolio step one, I scroll to portfolio step two, portfolio step three. And when I'm ready, I go to session two. You'll also see that at the bottom of every page, it's a reminder for young people to constantly check in with their host site and to complete their hats and ladders app. So for week one, session one, that's profile building. But as they move through the different sessions, that'll change to complete your level two on hats and ladders, complete your level three, or continue pathways. So I just shared a lot. So I'm going to pause. I see a lot of uh, things popping up in the chat. So let's answer some questions. All right, Tyler. Let's see. Um, a lot of it is Sorry. A lot of it is around um, workbook stuff. Yep. And I know you just kind of touched on it. And it was just kind of like, how do you check participants to make sure they're completing their work in, in, the, in the workbook? Yeah, great question. So one of the limitations of a static Google site is that it cannot collect anything and it can't give you anything back. So that is one thing that if you're going to use the PBL curriculum and use these sessions in the workbook, you will have to have a mechanism for collecting those items. Uh, we'll talk through some options for that in a moment. And then on Thursday with Hats and Ladders, we'll actually go through how you would create a Google Classroom to support that work. Um, there are a lot of different ways you can do it. Again, Google Classroom is an option. You could also use a ePortfolio website. And I provided um, some suggestions in here as well. You could decide, I have a small cohort of young people, or my facilitators are really going to be with these core 40. They might just submit via email you decide what you're able to do based on the tech access that you have. So if you do not have access to Google Suite and Google Classroom is not for you, that's totally fine. There are other ways and mechanisms that you can use to collect the portfolio items. Um, there was a question around um, the website we need permission from organization for us to use it. Or are we getting specific login information? A great question. This is going to be a public facing website. So young people will not need a login, neither will facilitators. There's no username or password. Once you have the URL, you're able to access. Um, yeah, can you show us how to fill in the, the workbook? Oh, sure. <laughs> All right. So if I go to my workbook, let me scroll up. So this isn't a Google Doc. Um, one thing I want to note that within the website, we'll have a couple different options. So there'll be a PDF fillable copy. Uh, there'll be a rich text file, which means that if I have Microsoft Word, I can just upload that, use it via Microsoft Word, and then a Google document. So if I wanted to start filling this out, I would just start typing in. So Tyler McCormick, she, her, right? My goals for the summer to learn new skills, right? I just start adding all of my, my content in here. And then one additional thing that we are going to do for the launch is actually chunk the workbook based on the scope and sequence. So I'll have multiple copies where you have session, just session one and two, and then session three and four to match those weeks. So you could either give a young person, here's your entire workbook, here's everything you're gonna do for the summer, or you can decide, here are your first two sessions. Here are your next few sessions. Just if it feels overwhelming to give everybody all of it at once. Another question. Just, another really good question here um, is: Will there will will DYCD need documents from this website for payroll purposes? Great question, Cynthia. You are on. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Providers have the flexibility on how they review the deliverables uh, from the young people. So in terms of what you will be submitting um, for payroll purposes is uh, the young people's activity sheets that I mentioned this morning. So DYCD is not reviewing completion or um, 
anything related to young people's work this summer. As always, you know, um, for um, evaluation or, you know, data collection purposes, we might ask you for a sampling of young people's work. Um, and, you know, uh, we will also be issuing guidance later on in terms of, you know, what information you need to keep in terms of participant files. I don't have any information related to that right now, uh, but guidance will be issued later on. Um, one note also just about collection of these portfolio items. We are not saying the facilitators need to, you know, assess all of these using a rubric. If you have the capacity to do that, that is absolutely wonderful. But it's really, did a young person complete the task? Is it clear that they understood what it was? And could they demonstrate some of the learning that they've done in self-guided content? So I think that's going to be really critical as facilitators receive these portfolio items. Um, for example, maybe I get a resume from a young person. What I'm looking for on that document is, did a young person, were they able to follow the template? Do they understand what needs to be included in this resume? Or am I receiving like a one pager that just has a name and a couple bullets? And if that's all that's on there, then as a facilitator, I'm gonna circle back with that individual participant if I have the capacity and see what additional support she or he may need to finalize that resume, right? So it's not necessarily a full on assessment of these tasks, but really just seeing, did they do it? Did they understand what they were doing? And can I see from this particular digital artifact or document that they have a sense of what it is this artifact is for. Um, and I think that's going to be really critical because we also know it's going to be quick to receive all these things and then have to report the hours. Um, another question, um, and, and I think you've spoken to this quite a bit. Um, so there's, um, are there modified lessons and materials for students with disabilities? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, you know, and it's something that we talked about a lot last summer with PBL as well. Um, what we have on the website to try and ensure that there's lots of modalities for learning are additional videos. But for young people who need additional support, um, this self-guided learning will require more touch points. Um, so that may mean, we talked about touch points a little bit in the first session, but that may mean like I'm checking in with this handful of students via WhatsApp a few times, or I'm even scheduling a smaller cohort in order to work with a small group. Um, those are things that really, as they arise, programs and facilities are gonna have to navigate. Um, you know, we've done as much as we can to try and make it not as text heavy um, to ensure there's integration of a lot of different resources. Uh, but as we know, there's always a lot more that can be done really on an individual basis. Uh, yeah, we have a, a few things. Um, I'm guessing the, the, the question around um, no logins, how are we tracking progress of the young person? So you're going to track progress by uh, getting those portfolio steps, right? I, I'm going to have self-guided learning that's assigned to me for every week. If I decide to use the YY curriculum, for example, in week one, actually, let me come back to, I'm going to go back to scope and sequence. So in week one, I have YY session one and two. So meaning I'm going to go through those on the website. I'm going to complete the corresponding portfolio steps. And then at the end of that week, I'm going to submit those portfolio steps to my facilitator to, to collect my hours and to demonstrate my work. Yeah, I think, I think that's it for right now. Okay, so I'm gonna just uh, go through OY, which is in terms of formatting and design is the same as YY, just different content. And then I'll show a little bit more of what's in these uh, sections as well. So for OY, let's see, let's do, we'll go to session five. Um, and session five in the current scope and sequence, the universal one, is happening in week three. So for this uh, particular session, I'm exploring citizenship and understanding what does it mean to be a citizen? How do I 
um, define that. What is civic infrastructure? What does that mean? And starting to really understand local civic infrastructure. Uh, you'll see again, same setup. So whoops, every time I enter, I have an optional icebreaker. So this one is your identity is your superpower. And it's a TED talk um, about what it means to, to share your identity with the world. You can choose to watch it or not. It's just a way to get you started and grounded in the session. I move through my mission. I explore my goals for today. I'm reminded that each of these steps is going to take about an hour. And then for this work today, I'm looking at a couple different local websites of local governance structures. I'm going to record what I learn in my workbook. Um, one thing I also want to note, because we tried to make the website less text heavy, some additional content is in the workbook just to, to guide any sort of portfolio step work. Um, again, I move through session one, two, and three, and then I'm reminded again to check in with my host site for directions about sharing my digital portfolio items, and I can move to session six. Um, I'm going to move actually to session seven instead. And one thing I do just want to show that in session seven, we've embedded for both YY and OY a survey um, that just looks at, and I'll click on it actually. So this is a very simple Google form and it's to understand what is working and what may not be working. So I'm finding hats and ladders helpful. I find the website content helpful, right? And just really being able to rank these will take this information and use it to really strengthen this program um, and understand what worked this summer and what did not work this summer. So this is embedded in session seven and also session 14. And we will certainly share those results um, so you all know that as well. So if I come back here, um, as I said, the same sort of setup. Um, one thing I want to highlight for, and let's see if it's in here. Well, Tyler, um, can, we, can we pause for one second? Yeah, um, I'm just gonna show one more thing, Dennis, and then we okay. can pause. So one thing you'll see that any time uh, a session is referred to, so in session six, I did some work that aligns with this session. That session is hyperlinked so that I could go back to it. All right, go ahead. We can pause. So we, I wanted to address something that I think, you know, is kind of like seemingly in a lot of the questions. Um, the role of, the, of the, the agency staff member, a lot of the questions about how do we know when things are happening um, are really the fundamental responsibility of the staff member in this process. It's where that relationship really exists. Um, we're, this site, none of this work is gonna be happening without the, a, a staff member from your program. So in so much of the questions, they are the, they're the partner. You've got the young person and you've got the staff member that's supporting them. So many of the check-ins and, and how will we know questions really do live in the structure that you set up with the, your participants. The, the, the site is for information purposes. The site provides the content, at, but the role here in this process really is for the staff member to be able to develop the structure like they're they're still managing in collaboration with how and when things are gonna occur so so we want to you know just you know make sure that that part isn't being missed the staff this neat none of these sites are going to sort of remove the staff member from that part of the of the equation Absolutely. And it's really, you know, just as young people have gone through in school, being on a synchronous session, a video conference for three to five hours a day is just not realistic, right? It's you lose attention. You're not going to have as much engagement. We don't even know that young people could spend that much time on a synchronous session. So the self guided learning is what they're going to be doing independently. And then in those synchronous facilitated learning sessions, very similar to what we're doing right now, that's when a lot of those project pieces are going to come together and you also get a sense of where are young people at? Are they feeling like they can move through this independently or do they need more support? But it is, as Dennis said, it's going to be on the facilitator to really make sure that they're moving through the project, that they're getting work done in, in any independent work, and that these sessions are really to coalesce around the group and make sure that 
they feel comfortable, they understand the expectations, and there's real learning happening. So with that, I actually want to pause and just, you know, talk about sort of our day so far. We all connected this morning and we had a synchronous 90 minute learning session where we set the stage for what the summer is going to look like. We talked about cre you know, key model features, um, all the different components. We then said goodbye for a little while. You all went to lunch, but we gave you an asynchronous assignment. You had to do some independent work, which was just sending us, you know, the word for our word cloud. If I'm facilitating with a group of young people, that independent work might be start session one, and then we're gonna come back together in the afternoon and we're gonna talk about the experience. We're gonna talk about what you learned, what you had challenges with, and what you need to move forward. So even the setup of today is a mirror of what this is gonna look like on the ground when folks are implementing. Does that, does that start to sort of Less than a little bit of the confusion for folks. You could give me a thumbs up, thumbs to the side if your camera's on. I see a few blank faces. Logan, thank you. Awesome. I'm getting some thumbs up. Great. And I know I do want to say I know this is a lot of information to take in very quickly. Once this URL is fully mapped and we're able to share the site, I think it'll, it'll make things feel less abstract. You'll have some time to play with the content. And then we, again, are going to be having these implementation sessions throughout the summer, whereas any of these barriers come up, we can really troubleshoot around those granular items. Um, but I think this is a good segue just to show a little bit of what's in the facilitator guide. Um, and then I think we'll spend most of the rest of the session just talking through any additional questions that are surfacing. So I'm going to keep moving back and forth to my screen. Actually, Theo, I'm going to share. I'm going to skip that one slide. Let's go straight to facilitator guide. Um, let's see. And it's in the facilitator guide that, as Tyler said, so much of the work has been laid out. So you'll be able to see that there are lessons, that there are links to things that really do speak to what the facilitator would be doing when they're bringing the group together that will help set up what the young person should be doing on their own. So exactly. Bad yeah, so I'm just going to show a small component of the guide. And this is really what facilitators will use to support those synchronous learning sessions. So this is for module one, session one, welcome to summer 2020. These are all the facilitated activities that I could potentially use if I decide to go with YDI's PBL experience. So this is my session charge, which talks about what is this session about? What are the primary goals for me as a facilitator? What do I want to make sure that young people leave with after this facilitated learning? Here we then talk about how do you create a safe space? These are some elements that we know need to be a part of even a virtual environment. We talk about trust, belonging, care, safety and reciprocity, all of which are a part of YDI's framework. Um, we have some helpful resources and tips so definitely checking out your portfolio workbook. Um, if you'll be sharing a website or page, be sure it's ready to go. These are all the steps that folks need to take before the session even starts. So as a facilitator, I'm fully prepared to engage my young people. This is then broken down into four steps in more detail. So before the session, I'm gonna do all of these four things. One, I'm gonna reach out to participants. I'm gonna introduce myself. I'm gonna share expectations. I'm going to go into the Summer Bridge website on my own and start to explore the content so that I could really speak to it. I'm going to read the section in my guide on Project Based Learning 101. Um, and let's see what else. I'm going to think about anything I'm going to do in terms of practice to demonstrate trust, care, safety, belonging, and reciprocity. Here, opening. So this is my session. I'm going to have an icebreaker. We have an appendix. Um, in the facilitator guide that has over a hundred different icebreakers. So a facilitator could just pick one of those and say, I want to use this on this day, or perhaps they have one that they've used with their cohort already, and that's what they want to use, and that's absolutely fine. This is really, again, just a suggested list of activities and a guide for how you might really construct your session. So my step two in the session, I'm going to establish norms. And these are a series of prompts that I might share with my young people. And again, I can pick and choose. If I only have a 30 minute session, I'm not going to do all of this. If I'm doing a 90 minute session, I may be able to spend a lot more time here. Step three, 
we debrief. What are some things that, you know, have come up in our preliminary discussions right now? What do we want to dig into more? Then I have another activity so it's called um, Great Expectations. So it talks about the theme of the week and some of the things that young people are going to be doing in self-guided learning. And then I have a closing activity, next steps, and what I need to do after the session. And we have this for every session for both YY and OY. So you're going to have a lot of content to be able to play with to make sure whatever is happening in that independent self-guided learning is really bolstered by these synchronous sessions. And again, I'm going to pause and see if any any additional questions are, are coming up for folks. So there's a question about merging um, information into the Google Classroom. I know that's a part of what we shared this morning. Yeah, so great question. Um, on Thursday, uh, Scott and the Hats and Ladders team and YDI is really going to have a session that talks through how do you now create a safe uh, space for young people and what are some strategies for facilitation and implementation. And part of that session, we will actually show how you would set up a Google Classroom. Um, because this is a Google site, we are highly recommending using a Google Classroom because it serves as a hub for all of this, any assignments, any collection of portfolio steps. Um, you know, we are certainly not getting paid by Google, but there, there is a reason that, you know, New York City, when we went remote, turned to Google Classrooms, it's very easy to use. And it's, if you've never used it before, which actually for me, this summer was the first time I ever used it and I was able to pick it up very quickly. So we certainly will um, share more of that. If you cannot make the Thursday session, that will also be recorded and then DYCD will share out that recording. So there's a question here. I think it's a little more geared towards um, Cynthia. Uh, is it possible to change the enrollment timeline and start youth now? No, the way that the system has been developed and designed, um, there's no opportunity to have any participant activities prior to the 27th of um, this month. And just for clarity around the process of, of getting you access to stuff, we want to give you access to complete things and we also want to want to give you an opportunity to get access to that stuff post training so one of the things that that yes we know can cause some tension is because you want to be able to kind of experience and explore these things but we want the site to be as complete as possible and so much content is still being added that really says we're kind of still mapping all the way through. We're putting all the information in. And that's why Monday we feel is the, the, the soonest that we could give you a complete access. If anything happens before that, D, DYCD will send you a link so that you'll be able to see things sooner than Monday. And, and we're also using these sessions to drive some of the additional content that gets added as well. So. Right, and, th and that's also true for Grant Associates because they'll be doing their trainings at the end of the week. All of those videos will be made available and added to the site as well. So there are a couple of questions about the, about the amount of time for the facilitator, Tyler. So um, I see the question available for 18 hours for support and assistance where needed. If your agency has the capacity to have that facilitator working for 18 hours, yes. That would be great. I know for most folks, that's not necessarily an option. So thinking about, um, you know, when you might have what we could call office hours or support hours for young people that are outside of those synchronous learning sessions. So setting aside one to two hours a week, if you can only do an hour, that's fine too. But having young people know this is the time that I'm going to connect with my facilitator to ask particular questions about my experience and any challenges that I'm having. I think that would be a really good way to navigate it um, if you are not able to have a facilitator work for those full hours every week. Great question. Thank you, Samantha. And if I can ask, um, at, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, from a DY City perspective, although we have not prescribed a minimum hour of facilitated engagement um, throughout the program for young people, the expectation is that they are having weekly contact with uh, staff, specifically um, 
more so during the PBL and the uh, workplace challenge experiences. So we know that the hats and ladders experience is self-guided. However, you know, you will still be in touch with young people that week because you want to ensure that they are um, completing that experience and that you are working with them in ter terms of payroll processing and all of those aspects. Um, so, you know, once you get on the, um, the nitty gritty of the PBL and the workplace challenge experience, you know, you're talking to your young people on a weekly basis at the minimum. And again, just to build from that, that does not necessarily need to be a full Zoom conference. Um, you could think about we're using WhatsApp or I'm going to have a 15 um, minute like quick energizer with my young people. And that's fine, too. Those are those touch points that are really going to help support engagement throughout the entire process. And we know that we saw in, in the in the first sort of poll that we launched a good number of you have not been doing um, a lot of work in this virtual space. So the, the, the point that's being made about touch points and about the before and after really is something that you will need to pay attention to working with young people in this virtual space, as you can imagine, is very different than than what we've been doing. As, you know, even for us, you know, we've we've launched this. The vast majority of the people have their cameras off, which is fine in this setting. But we can expect that that will probably be what will happen when you're working with your young people. When we launched a poll, we launched a poll with 138 people in the session. Only 100 responded. Again, so we would need to follow up with those other 38 that didn't. So when you think about the amount of time that you'll need to spend, it's going to ebb and flow based on the amount of, of response that you get from your young people. So the before and after time that needs to be thought about really is about figuring out when you're working virtually with your group. Who are the young people that you need to prompt to come to session? And who are the young people that you need to follow up with behind? And it, there was a question about platforms that you use, whether it's Zoom or, or other. Again, that really is going to be about your comfort. You know, for us, I've been managing microphones the entire time, checking cameras, you know, not talking as much, but that's a role that has to be played when you have a group as large as this. So the more young people you have on, the more support roles you'll need. So those are the kind of things to be thought about in this process. Um, and I want to point attention, Michelle brought up a, a great question. We know that you guys are planning right now and not having access to all these materials is a challenge. Um, we will try and troubleshoot on our end to see if there are other ways, if the website, you know, takes more time. Um, obviously, you'll definitely have it by early next week, but the mapping does take a few days. And unfortunately, that's outside of our hands. That's a tech process with GoDaddy um, that we just we have to wait and make sure that it's totally finalized before we share the URL. Um, but Dennis, you and I can troubleshoot and see if there's some materials that outside of the website we can share out so your groups can really get started. Um, because I do understand you're doing planning now and you need access to these materials. Thank you for that question, Michelle. Um, yeah, and can, Tyler, can I add to that? You know that, and I think we mentioned it in the session this morning that um, we know the strain that it is to have to come up with this program that, you know, it would have taken us three to four months of planning at a minimum um, under normal circumstances. And, you know, a, a way that we try to offset and alleviate a little of that was by um, giving you all the opportunity to front load the hats and ladders. So hopefully, Michelle, um, by the time you have the website information from YDI, you still have, you know, maybe that first week of programming on what we kick off on the 27th to still do some work with your staff and get them ready and comfortable with this content or whatever content you're planning for your young people. Absolutely. And I want to also surface Anita's question um, about really modifying lesson plans and using your own platform. You can absolutely do that. This is content that is available to you. Um, if you choose to use it, wonderful. But if you already have a plan that really meets the specific needs of your young people, then you can use those PBL plans. You would just need to share with UICD. We are not using YDI's content. We have a plan. And then Cynthia, I know that they need to fill out 
a project plan template. Um, so that's what you would complete in order to just share what it is your young people will be doing for the PBL component this summer. And, you know, if I can add to that, Tyler, you know, in terms of that PBL plan submission, um, if you're fully operating under this YDI's plan, you know, we have been working with them to develop the content so we have an understanding of what it is that you're going to be working on and doing for the summer. You know, we will look to hear which sessions you're going to be um, utilizing, if you're going to be utilizing the whole uh, plan, you know, we just want to have an understanding of what it is that you're implementing. If you're not um, utilizing YDI's plan, um, we're going to be looking on your PBL plan for an understanding of um, what's going to be facilitative versus self-guided and what type of assignments, products, and what's going to be the goal for each week for your young people. So that's all very similar to what we looked for um, last year. I think that this year we are going to be much more flexible in terms of um, seeing the content uh, on a week by week basis. But you know, you just have to make sure that you're submitting um, to the OECD and that it is clear uh, what the goal is, as I mentioned, what are the type of assignments that they're going to be working and what are going to be the outcomes. So, you know, post meeting will also be sending more guidance um, on that. Absolutely. And uh, Cynthia, can you, can you also just, sorry, quick, Dennis, um, can you speak to if you, they are using YDI's plan, do they still need to complete that form? Because I, I see that came up as well. So you will have, because you still need to submit um, a, a plan in YEPS so that you can assign young people to your activities and complete, you know, all of the payroll functions. However, you know, Tyler showed us today the uh, scope and sequence, right? So you're basically just copying and pasting that scope and sequence information into your um, five-week plan. And then, of course, you're always going to be completing um, information in terms of what you are proposing to be the schedule for the week. Um, the facilitators to ensure that uh, it's meeting the ratio. Um, and then uh, that's, that's the gist of what you're submitting in, in YEPS. And Cynthia, there's still that question that's floating out about the need to, to um, capture information based on what young people do in the PBL. The direct question kind of speaks to the completion of the program, what they're capturing, and, and what sampling of, the, of said materials looks like. So just looking for clarity around what that process might need to look like. Yeah, so as I, as I shared before, you know, um, DYCD is not conducting reviews of participants' deliver deliverables or artifacts. That's part of, you know, what you're building as your experience for your young people. Um, however, we do reserve the right of asking for sampling. And we're looking, uh, when we're saying, you know, for sampling is you, we want to showcase what the success stories for this summer were, right? So if you had young people working on a very powerful project for the summer. Um, that's part of the information that we want to be able to share with all of our stakeholders and partners about what the success story is for this summer. I hope that that clarifies, Dennis. So, so more about showcasing the work versus being rated on that work. Is that accurate? Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And there's a question about the scope and sequence and when can it be shared so that they can use it to plan. Yeah, so I will, um, I'll connect with Hats and Ladders and DB Grants just to make sure they feel good about everything's finalized and we can send that out. Um, one other thing that we can do just because I know folks want to get into the content, um, especially around YDI's PBL and I'm going to quickly show my screen one more time. Um, one thing that we can share that's much more granular in terms of our experience um, is a scope and sequence that's just specific to YDI's PBL for both OY and YY. And Michelle, this might be something that could be helpful, but it has, and let me make this a little bit bigger because I can see that it's very small, but it has the breakdown of every week, uh, what the core activities are in each session, um, the e-portfolio steps that are there, core learning goals, and then any of the hats and ladders work that young people are doing. So. If it would be helpful, you know, Cynthia, we could also share this with you and that can go out. And this is really so folks can start to see if I use YDI's program, these are all the things my young people will be doing. 
This is separate from that you, you know, kind of broad 50 level foot um, universal scope and sequence. This gets into just the PBL nitty gritty work. Um, so we'll make sure that DYCD has a copy and that's shared out as soon as we can. Cool. Um, there was also one more contractual question from uh, Edward, very specifically around, uh, let me go back up and find it. Um, are youth enrolled in AGVP disqualified from concurrent enrollment in Summer Bridge? Cynthia. Um, so the AGVP participants are going to be offered the same experience in terms of, you know, the, the hats and ladders opportunities, the um, PBL opportunities, and I believe the workplace challenge opportunities. So they will have the experience of the same content and the program model is still also a five week program, um, but they wouldn't be enrolled with you and at the same time be enrolled with another provider. If that was the question, if, if in this clarity, I'm happy to clarify or add. So I'm going to, as we get ready to kind of close out this session, I'm going to go back to um, sharing my screen really quickly. We can skip this one, Dio. Cool. And there's a question about PBL plan deadline, Cynthia. Can you respond to that? You could skip that one, too. Oh, my. Um, <laughs> what is the question, Dennis? Uh, it, does the PBL plan have a deadline or could we modify or add to it over time? So the goal is that we receive all of the PBL plans next week to approve and review with the understanding that if you're fully doing the PBL plans following YDI's model, um, you can expect that we will be approving that plan bearing any questions in terms of staffing or programmatic, not necessarily in terms of content, because we are already very familiar with the content that you are going to be offering through this YDI plan. Um, however, we know, and, and I believe, you know, YDI mentioned this session or, or in the morning session, that we know that you will have to adapt and adjust to uh, your young people and your programming. So, you know, we do have room for modification and adjustments of what your original plan was um, when you submitted it to us. Great. Um, so we're gonna just go through those last few slides and then we'll, we'll open up again one more time before we wrap up at 2.30 for questions. Um, as we continue to share, you know, if we cannot get to your questions today, please still put them in the chat. Uh, because we will share this with all TA providers, we'll have an FAQ document, uh, and as questions continue to come up over the summer, we'll keep building upon that document. So um, all questions are great questions, and I'm sure if you have it, someone else in the SYEP universe also has it. Um, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this particular slide. This just shows there are a lot of different options for collecting the portfolio work. Um, I've starred Google Classroom simply because it is the easiest to integrate. Uh, young people in New York City have already been using Google Classroom, so there is a sense of familiarity. Um, you know, you can design that classroom in a way that doesn't feel quite as academic um, and really walk through how to navigate that with your group. Um, but there are also additional options, and all of these are in the facilitator guide um, that I can attach to a one-pager if we need you to get that to you as soon as possible. Um, Googlio is another one that is part of the Google universe. It has uh, an app that's associated, uh, Book Creator, Flipgrid are some options, and then go in real old school and just doing some hard copies or even email, um, depending on what your level of access is and the platforms that your agency uh, will provide. So this is just a quick glance of some of the options. Um, and as I shared, uh, the Hats and Ladders and YDI will go through more of facilitation, how you would design a Google Classroom in Thursday's training. Mm. Um, and so just quickly, just tech considerations as we're talking about all these things, obviously the, the repository 
for the portfolio steps is going to be critical. If you, you do, if you decide to use YDI's PBL curriculum, I would also say if you don't use that curriculum, but you want to continue to use an e-portfolio for young people. So when they end the summer, they have all these career ready resources that are available to them. It's a great idea to just integrate that into your model. Um, any sort of virtual conferencing platform. So some folks are using Zoom, other people are using Google Hangouts. Um, Blue Jeans is another option. There are a lot of different options out there. If your organization already has one where you have a license and you want to use that, that's great. Um, in our facilitator guide as well, we provide some helpful hints on how to use Zoom, uh, Google Hangouts, and this additional options to support that work. Um, as we've talked about throughout this session and earlier, just mechanisms for touch points. Um, some folks have been using Class Dojo, which is often used in schools. Slack is a great way to communicate really with staff. Um, I've never used it with young people, but I think it can also be used in that respect as well. And WhatsApp is something that we often use with our youth council and something that I use with my uh, high school students when I teach at NYU. So it's a great way to just constantly be checking in uh, with your groups and not necessarily having to do a full facilitated session. Um, really just considerations, how you're going to communicate and what types of technology are going to facilitate that communication. So thinking of your young people first and then the technology second. Um, and that's really going to be a way to navigate this summer and leverage these resources to fit your particular group and your needs. So that's going to bring us um, to the end of this before we jump into the Q&A. Um, so folks could go to menti.com and we're going to try and get a better outcome this time than we did the first time. And um, if you could just put, um, I mean, you go to menti.com, enter the code 1344.87. And just tell us what's one takeaway you had from today's sessions. Um, we really appreciate it. That'll help us in our feedback as well. And just remember to continue to drop some questions in the chat um, as we get ready to gear up for um, the Q&A session. There are some folks that I've told um, individually that I'll make sure to bring your questions up during the Q&A session, so I'll make sure to do that. But please go to uh, menti.com and fill this out for us. And please know that, as Theo said and, and Tyler mentioned in the beginning, all the questions that don't get answered here will, will show up again in an FAQ um, that we will be able to share back. Uh, we're lifting out specific questions that people are asking and We'll, we'll make sure that we forward those, those questions accordingly. And, and then all of that information can be disseminated back to everybody. So if you have completed the mentee, if you can give me a thumbs up some That'd be greatly appreciated. They will have a good idea. Of, okay, all right. I see some thumbs. I love all the different color thumbs popping up. And please, if you have any specific questions that that are, you know. Um, not necessarily about PBL that you want to ask, please put them in the chat. Again, we'll forward those questions uh, as, as much as possible so that you're able to get a response. Um, so that being some that, folks are, are logging off. So before you do leave the space, we have one more thing, which is our evaluation. Um, Theo, do you want to yeah, put that in the chat before folks leave? So, uh, Robin, I also see that you're asking about workplace challenge. Uh, Brand Associates, who has designed the workplace challenge, has a training. Um, and so I keep mixing up training dates, so correct me if I'm wrong. They have a training on Thursday and on Friday. 
um, that you can attend and they'll deeply go through what is the workplace challenge and the resources that are associated with it. So I just dropped the uh, survey into the chat. Please take the time to uh, let us know how we did today. Great. And before we wrap, I again just want to thank everybody for your time. I know that you're quickly mobilizing on the ground to make things happen, to train staff, to really understand the lay of the land. Uh, please know YDI is a partner in this work. We are available. Um, as we shared, we'll continue to have these implementation sessions. We want those implementation sessions to really hit any kind of content that you want to, to talk through. Um, so if things come up while you're implementing, please share them because we want to spend that time um, working through it with you. We are a resource throughout this process. Um, and I just want to thank you again and say that this is going to be an awesome summer. It's going to be a hard summer. We're going to learn a lot. Um, but the, the real goal is that we have something that's powerful and important for young people. And I know that's why we're all deeply invested in this work. So thank you so much. Um, all right, so we're going to go into Q and A. Um, so I know some of the questions that I've mentioned. Uh, um, yeah, there's some questions about budgeting. Um, is there any idea when the budgets will be available so the providers can hire staff? Um, all budgeting questions can be directed to our director of operations, Daniel Guillen, as well as his team. Um, I believe the email address is syepops um, uh, at uic.nyc.gov. And I'll drop it in the chat as well. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. Yep. Um, do we know how many youth assigned per site, or is that flexible? Think it's the same ratio that goes to their slot allocations so you will have to connect with um your program director if you're not the program director to ensure you know what the allocations are for your contract for this summer uh is there a budget beyond stipends yes or no or unknown i guess a budget for staff is the question that's your agency's budget. Um, we are, and then in terms of participants, everybody is receiving uh, 700 for younger youth and up to 1,000 for older youth. It's, a, it's not an hourly program for this year. Um, you know, folks are asking for resources around uh, the spoken sequence, the sample of the spoken sequence. Uh, you know, immediately wrapping up here within, you know, an hour or so, we should have all the video recordings from today's uh, Zooms. So we'll be able to get stuff back out to folks pretty soon, like either today or tomorrow the latest. The question again about whether or not young people can do SYAP and do the AGVEP program. Uh, no, young people uh, will be participating um, in one of the two and the experience offered will be the same experience in terms of the program model um, and the content that they have access to. Um, is payroll for participants weekly? Yes, we will have weekly payroll. Um, some folks have some questions around some of the other workshops that are being offered, like how can they apply or when will they know about those offerings? Uh, we have sent all the registration links for everybody. If you have not received um, the registration, you can follow up with myself post-training. And it was a question specifically about the YEPS training. When is that? When is that? Yeah. Oh, I do not have the... Um, information for that. I'm not sure if Maja is online and can answer that question. Hi, Cynthia. Thank you. So specifically, uh, we are still working on getting a date for that training. It will be within this week and we will keep you guys posted as soon as we confirm that date and time frame, but in within this week. 
Thank you. Okay. Um. Yeah, folks are asking for contact information, like emails and stuff like that. Um, and then there's also a question around at the end of DYCD survey, there's a question about an action plan. Can you please provide more information? I think that's just a general, that, that's a part of the general question that they ask. Um, and in this case, the action plan really is around the ability to create your plan. So um, you don't have to worry about filling that out on this one. And can we resend the survey link? Yes. I would just like to remind people um, this last one last quick slide and then folks are free um, to move on with their day as they choose to. So um, the census is uh, still occurring. Um, the response has been extended to October 31st. You can respond to the census online via phone or you can submit your paper form by mail. Um, starting this summer in August through uh, October, they'll be knocking on folks' doors and, um, you know, just making sure you're having conversations with your young people throughout the summer around the importance of the census. Um, it's not like we can get a redo in 2022. Um, this, the census is extremely important to how resources get allocated in our communities. Um, and there are a lot of, there are already a lot of myths um, around and fears around um, the census. And I know the current political um, climate doesn't really help much, uh, but we have to think beyond that for the 10 years that the census does actually um, provide resources for us in our community. So make sure that we're sharing information with our families, with our young people um, throughout the summer, just about the importance of the census. And there's additional information on the site that you'll get um, for folks who are still on the call. Thank you. Thank you again. Um, you know, good luck with everything. We're here to support you. Um, and please feel free to reach out as questions continue to come up. Oh, thank you, Judith. And, and Judith is saying the current New York City response rate is below 50%. So we really want to continue to push the census um, and, and make some impact with that percentage. Thank you, Judith. I did not know that. Wow. That's really scary, actually. That probably means it's... But um, yeah, if, uh, if there are no more questions, like Tyler said, you know, have a, have a good summer. Um, we'll be seeing everybody probably on Thursday again. So uh, we look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Have a great afternoon. Um, and bring that child. Who's, who's got the kid? Thank that kid. You. And no, my kid is snapping. <laughs> but thank you, YDI, for hosting this very informative session. Um, we know that it was a lot of content, but we are so grateful to have you all as our partners for this summer. And we look forward to engaging with uh, um, all of you in uh, the next session. Have a great rest of the afternoon. And yes, PowerPoints and all that good stuff will be shared shortly. We will send to DYCD and they will then share out. Bye, my Shonda. See you later. Thanks. <laughs> Bye, all.
Take it easy. Bye. Thank you so much.